Hello there and welcome. I'm Ole Brygger and if you're new here, I really hope I will earn your subscription today. In this video, I will build a clerical temple. I already prepared some laser cut windows. I have some foam and I 3D printed some shrines and some statues and benches and all that stuff. So there will be a lot of details in here. This video will be in three parts because the temple will be in three parts. The first will be the entrance and stuff with the altar and all that. And the second part will be the temple library. And the last part, let's leave that as a surprise. So why don't we get started? I had some new pieces of army painter foam and a couple of scrap pieces as well. And the scrap piece matched perfectly for the size I wanted. I have a general idea of how this project is going to look, but something will always change during the process. I'll use my hot glue gun to put the pieces together. Usually I use toothpicks when I'm working with big boards like this. But since there's going to be another layer on top of this, it's not that problematic not using the toothpicks. I marked up the base and cut it to size, but later on I'll change that, but we will come back to that. I had another big piece of scrap foam in my pile and it fit perfectly, so I will just cut this to the size and make a copy of that, because I want some elevation and some stairs in front of the temple. I want the stairs to be curved and I know exactly what to do about that, and if you've seen my previous videos, you know what I'm talking about. My trash can. It had the perfect curve that I needed for this. And then I could just cut it out with my X-Acto knife, using some 100 grain sandpaper to smooth the edges. For the top layer, I needed a small notch, and I will also make a round piece to put in here. This will, however, be only 5 mm thick. The Army Painter foam is 10 mm, so half the thickness. And this was pretty easy to do on my Proxon. For the bottom part of the stairs, I needed a bit more complex shape. It was pretty easy to draw it up on the foam, but cutting it out by freehand, not so much. This piece also needed to be 5 mm thick, and this was pretty easy. It had some gaps and I think it looked okay and I can always fill it up with some drywall filler. I also need some pillars in front of the table. And I looked in my scrap pile and found this piece of pink foam. I will use one of the jigs from Shifting Lands. I will leave a link in the description below because these are awesome when you're making pillars. It's pretty easy. You'll just cut out a chunk of foam, one inch by one inch by four inches. And then you slide the piece of foam into the jig and cut along the edge that you prefer. The jig has two different sides, so you can make two different kinds of pillars. Just pop out the foam, turn it 90 degrees and do it all over again on all sides. And then you have this nice shape that looks like an ancient column. I made four columns in total that will be in front of the temple entrance. I also made some smaller pieces of foam from the bottom of the jig these are going to be the sockets for some statues. And it was here I decided to cut down the base for the building to the same size as the building. This will give me more options to put different kinds of terrain next to the building. I went into Inkscape and designed some gables. I needed three, one for each side of the building and one for the overhang. My laser can easily cut through 10 mm wood. But this is foam and very soft and it will melt very easily. So I had to set up the speed very high for the engraving so I wouldn't melt too much foam. I needed to accept that I couldn't cut all the way through the foam without melting it. But at least I got some very deep grooves that I can cut with an X-Acto knife. It took a couple of attempts and as you can see here, I melted a lot of foam. So I had to do it over again. And in my second attempt, I got a lot more sharp lines. I didn't call all the way through, but I think an X-Acto knife and a metal ruler can do the job all right. Now I need to lay out the grid. 
I wanted some interior with perfect tiles that were 10 by 10 inches. And there should also be a room for a 10 mm wall all around the temple. And then I could start the markup of the doors and where I wanted all the windows. I also needed to scorch every line in the tiles and mark them up with a pencil to make a bevel edge. Since there will be no interior walls in the temple hall, I decided to make some nice patterns on the floor, just to make it a bit more interesting to look at. And now to the walls. I need some low walls that are one and a half inch high. This is to support playability so the players can easily access their miniatures. And I could have used some individual bricks to build all the bottom walls of the temple. But to speed up the process, I will just cut a strip of foam and draw in the bricks. However, the front and back of the temple will need some tall walls. In the back, I need to put a top window that will bring light down in the temple. And in the front, I have a door. The door was laser cut ahead of this project, and we will get back to that later. But the door frame was very easy to use as a template, and I used a glue stick, and it was pretty easy to cut it out with my Proxon. And then I just need to draw in the stonework. I've glued in all the walls and done some minor detail work, and now it's time to build the base. On these big boards of foam, the easiest way to put them together is with my hot glue gun. Final piece of the stairs glued in, and then I just need some sand. I made two small pieces of foam that were 1 inch by 1 inch and 5 millimeters thick. This is to support the middle columns, so they will be the same height as the outer columns. To hide all the crooked cuts I made on the bottom stair, I will use some drywall filler with a brush. I thin it down a bit with some water to make it flow a bit better into the groove. We also need some tall walls. I'll make these from 5mm foam core and cut them to the size and attach them to the roof. This will make it a lot easier to remove in one go and expose the playable interior. The foam core is pretty easy to cut with an X-Acto knife. Now that I have cut up all the pieces for the walls, I will need to cut out some holes for the windows. I also cut some frames for the windows that will be glued in and painted with some texture paint later. I just use a hot glue gun to glue in the window frames and then I will clean up the hole with my X-Acto knife. After that was done, I could start assembly everything. The walls, the gables and the roof. And again, hot glue was the way to go to make sure everything was stuck together right away. And the same goes for the overhang on the front of the building. I did not glue in the columns, but on the other hand, I will use some magnets, so they will be easy to remove for playability. I also need some roof shingle, and previously I've used this template I made on my bandsaw, and I just cut it out in foam. But this time I will use some black cardboard. I will tape a stack of cardboard to this foam core Go to Inkscape and make a design and cut them out on my laser cutter. And then I noticed something. All these nice cutoffs. Maybe I can use those bits for something. I made this quick little build of an altar and used the bits for details. To mount the roof shingles, I used some tacky glue. The tacky glue is just a PVA glue, but it's a bit thicker than ordinary PVA glue and it won't drip as easily and the paper will stay put and don't slide around. For the roof ridge, I cut some 1 and 3 thirds of an inch tiles and just folded them together and glued it in. Cardboard sucks up a lot of paint, so I gave it a treatment of mud podge mixed with black paint just to seal in the surface before I will paint it. Usually I use dry ground from AK to make stucco texture, but this time I want a more fine grain, so I decided to use a new one. This is the concrete from AK, and it has a much more fine texture, and I think it will suit the temple well. I'll also give the stairs in front of the temple the same treatment with this concrete texture paint. And then I could start priming it. I used this Cliff and Ruins foam primer from the Army Painter, 
Whoops. <laughs> the columns are still magnetic, I just forgot that. Usually I would have used some mud podge with black paint, but to speed up the process I chose this method and the result is almost the same, a bit more expensive, but it is faster. This is the main door for the temple. I laser cut it a couple of weeks before I started this project because I had an idea of what I was going to build and I wanted something to look good. So this is laser engraved and laser cut. I will use some dark wood speed paint from the army painter through my airbrush. All the windows will be painted with some rough iron, also from the army painter. After everything has dried up, I will dry brush it with some gold McGriffin from Citadel Color. I also need some hinges for the door because I want it to be able to open. I use some small pieces of cardboard and super glue them in. I've done a lot of resin pours recently and I've never had success with this type of UV resin before. Last time I used it was for my sewer tiles and as if you have seen it, watch up in the corner, I will put a card here. They went up in flames, not because of the resin, but they went up in flames. I will give it another chance and try to make some glass for these windows. I will mix it with some alcohol based UV resin color and Let's see how this will go. I think they turned out pretty good, but when I would remove the tape, it set some stains on the back and they were almost impossible to get off. So I decided that this will be the inside of the building and then I will repaint the frames for the outside. I want this temple to be white and shiny, so I started using a light grey primer from the Army Painter. The roof got some Hydra Turkeyes. I applied this with my airbrush and I think this color look awesome for the roof. The overhang of the roof shingles, I thought it didn't look right, so I just decided to cut them off. And I think this gave it a much cleaner look. I used some pan pastels burned umber for the lower parts of the brickwork. And then I used a light grey and a white for all the rest. I also needed to glue in the statues I 3D printed and painted. I just used some PVA glue, but in afterthought I should have used hot glue. This took forever to dry up and I don't know how many times I succeeded in flipping them over. I used these four colors from the army painter for the patterned floor. I think this looks great and it will give a nice contrast to the white and greys. And speaking about white, I will dry brush with a pure white where I think it needs some highlights. The windows will press fit nicely into the sockets and I don't even need to glue them in. With these windows I was not quite satisfied how they turned out, so I might redo them in the future. So press fitting them in will only be an advantage for me, so I can easily remove them again. To give the roof a final touch, I use some Army Painter Blue Wash. The temple is done and I put in some extra details and we are going to have a look at the interior. For instance, I put in these ornaments. They are actually buttons from a shirt. So uh, I think they turned out pretty cool. But let's have a look inside. of part one in this three part series. In the next video we're going to look at a library and if you already haven't seen it I already did a video about bookshelves and you can watch it I think up here somewhere. We're going to use those bookshelves in the library and I'm very excited to get started on that project. I'm a bit behind I don't have a video buffer anymore so this video, I just finished editing it 
right now, an hour before release uh, on YouTube. So I don't even know if you have access to the 4K version yet, if it's not done rendering. I'm under a bit of tram pressure, but I'll try to do my best to have another video for you next week. It will not be part two of this, but it will be something more interesting. Well, I'm very excited about it. Thank you for watching this video to the end. And if you haven't already done it and think I earned it, please subscribe down here and maybe give me a like or a comment down below. Goodbye for now.